Hi and welcome back to our new video. As you all know about the crazy American and Russian projects revealed at the time of Cold War, today we're about to discuss a rather very strange and insane project, a nuclear powered aircraft. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell if you like our content. After the Cold War started in 1945, both Russian and Americans were using nuclear power in any warfare tech you could think of, from weapons, ships, submarines, even on trains. The first to have the craziest idea to develop a nuclear powered aircraft was Americans. The first impression is rather clear, to be able to fly without the consideration of fuel and energy, without having limits for flight time but the truth of such ambition was much more than free energy resources. Noting that Russians and Americans were in a competition back then, both were trying to become more powerful in military warfare tech, which the ultimate power back then was having a 24-7 nuclear readiness all around the globe. The nuclear-powered aircraft was to make that possible. Imagine having a nuclear-powered nuclear bomber ready for mission all around the world, just in few hours you would be able to conquer the world. Well, of course back then there were no ballistic missile systems. Seems kinda the Hydra in Captain America's movies in inspiration and idea was after real events after all. In 1946 the US Air Force initiated the nuclear energy for the proportion of aircraft program. In 1951, the program was supplanted by the Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion Program, ANP, which was run by the Atomic Energy Commission. ANP studied two different types of nuclear-powered jet engines, General Electric's direct air cycle and Pratt & Whitney's indirect air cycle. In the direct air cycle program, air was drawn directly to the nuclear core where it was heated, then sent through a turbine and out the exhaust as thrust. The drawback to this design was that the air became irradiated and left a trail of radioactive particles in the plane's wake. The indirect air cycle method used a heat exchanger, where heat from the nuclear reactor heated either pressurized water or liquid metal. In return, heated air which moved through a turbine and out the exhaust providing thrust. While the indirect method was the safer of the two, its program never was able to produce hardware that was flight ready before the program was cancelled. While the propulsion came down to the direct method, a reactor that could fly on board an aircraft was still needed. The US aircraft reactor experiment was created to develop high power density and high output temperature nuclear reactor for use on an aircraft. The design that researchers settled on became the first molten salt reactor. Now that a propulsion system and a reactor had been created, a plane was needed to test. In 1951, the Air Force awarded a contract to Convair to fly a nuclear reactor on its board Convair B-36 Peacemaker aircraft. Convair was the result of a merger between Consulated Aircraft and Volte Aircraft. In 1953, Convair was purchased by General Dynamics and became one of its divisions. The B-36 Peacemaker was a strategic bomber that was flown by the US Air Force between 1948 and 1955 as a nuclear weapons delivery vehicle of the Strategic Air Command (SAC), but was replaced by the jet-powered Boeing B-52 Stratfortress. While the reactor dubbed the aircraft shield test reactor was operational, it did not power the aircraft. News of the flights leaked out to Russia, who misinterpreted as it as a successful test of a nuclear powered engine. And this spurred the Soviets into redoubling their efforts to produce a competing airplane. The Russians came up with a test aircraft. Aircraft 119 or LAL, which translates to the Flying Atomic Laboratory, nicknamed the Swallow. The craft was a modified four-engine turboprop TU-95, which was the largest Soviet bomber at that time. In the summer of 1961, just like the American tests, the Swallow took flight with the reactor on board, 
but not providing any proportion. As an odd aside to the nuclear powered aircraft story, the US military considered solving the shielding problem by employing elderly crews to fly the nuclear powered airplane. Their thinking was that the crew would die of natural causes before the effects of radiation could kill them. Today, you can view the decommissioned HDRE2 and HDRE3 reactors and test assemblies at the Experimental Breeder Reactor Facility at the Idaho National Laboratory. Imagine a nuclear bomber with a walking nuclear reactor and probably nuclear bombs on board had a simple accident like birds or bad weather condition and unluckily crashed somewhere near big cities. The catastrophe and the disastrous thing that could happen, the radioactivity that it would cause, it would truly be one of the worst scenarios of apocalyptic imagination. Let me tell you something, in fact such accident has happened right in America and near one of cities. And the most surprising and terrifying thing about this accident is that the nuclear bombs on board weren't simply nuclear bombs, they were hydrogen bombs. But hey, let's keep the rest for another time, shall we? So stay tuned by subscribing, you don't want to miss out our coming videos. See you soon.